I've been doing some lectures recently about crystals in the human body and I just gave this lecture on how inside the inner ear we actually have um, rocks in our ear but they're actually crystals called otoconia so past the eardrum inside this utricle there's these um, pencil like crystals and that's why people um, get dizzy because when the crystals end up in the canals they go on an angle and people get vertigo so we're just talking about the symbolism of how the human body is embedded with crystals in our teeth, in our bones, and our nails, and our hair, we're all crystals. But the symbolism of the ear is that it receives the frequencies from the external world. And I wanted to lead on to this chapter here about certain frequencies. I've been getting a lot of um, feedback in emails lately. People want to know more about why is 108 hertz so important. So. So just firstly, when we talk about hertz, we're talking about cycles per second. It's a way of measuring, just like we do with inches or millimeters, we're measuring frequency by their amplitude. So, this, so we can have one hertz, 50 hertz, 1000 hertz, megahertz, but there's something special about 108 hertz. And what I've been doing is um, I have a friend in America called Randy Masters, universalsong.com, and he's the world expert on frequencies. And uh, I got him to make these special tuning forks. So this one here actually says 108 hertz. So, and, and to get it fine-tuned, there's these weights that can move up and down their set. So these are um, heavy weights. So when I, when I hit it against something, I can feel it vibrating just by holding it and it's vibrating. So to receive this 108 hertz, I can place it on certain parts of my body. So when I put it here on this bone here, it's conducting right through and I feel the energy of what it's doing for me. So, um, so it's a bit of a meditation So because you need to tune in. to You're not hearing it, but there is a vibration. You're feeling the 108 hertz. Now the reason why 108 is sacred, most of... Most of you already know that 108 hertz um, is based on the pentagonal symmetry because the internal, the internal angle of the pentagon is 108, 108, 108. So if you added up those, all those angles, 108 times the 5 adds up to 540. So the harmonic of 540 is 54. And I'm leading up to this sequence. I'm going to explain that in a minute. But while I'm talking about the 108, um, I want to show you um, that the next level of this is called the octave. So if I wanted to um, work with the octave of this, I have to double 108 because the octave is the 1 to 2. So double 108 is 216. So I've, I've got um, two of these actually. So this one here, if you, if you were able to read it, it says 216 hertz. So it's a bit shorter than the other one. And the reason why I've got two of these is that when you play two together, it's, the ratio is one is to one. So it has, one is about unification and attunement. So to get the right resonance, I play the two together. Because if I played this, so let me play these two together. So I need to tap them. And, and I might put them here on my temples because when I put them, sometimes if I have a headache and I put these here, the ratio one to one, the unison energy is recalibrating the hemispherical distortion that's from a headache. So I find personally for me, if, if I just need some equanimity or calmness, I work with the unison 216. If I decided to work with these two together, the 108 and 216, they're in the ratio one to two and it's doing something different, it's creating something else. So we're still at the early stages of understanding frequency and harmonics, but if you're going to learn, the best way is to start with all these special numbers, this series that I'm talking about. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit more about why 108 is important, and because it's the mathematics of nature, um, the more we study, if we look inside of an apple and we do a transverse cut, you'll see that an apple is a five-pointed star. So that the, the, the mathematics of nature pretty much is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. So normally we start with one. And if we start with one, these 24 numbers will add up to another frequency called 117. So I've even got a third, another tuning fork here, which is 117 hertz. But because I want to re retain the 108 code, I'm starting with a zero for a special reason. 
And there's a huge discussion whether do we start the Fibonacci sequence with a zero or a one. I prefer the zero, you'll see why. So f what nature does, it, 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 it's a trinity of the past, present, future. So if I add these two numbers, zero and one make the one, it's, it's a trinity. One and one make two, two and three, five, five and eight make 13. But I didn't write 13, I wrote a four because what we're doing is continued subtraction for of nine, we keep taking away nine, nine, nine. So, but a shortcut for taking away nine, called the digital root, is just to add the digits. So one and three is a four. And then the next number would be eight and 13 is 21. But I add the digits is a three, seven, one, eight. I could keep continuing. What we're looking for is that these numbers are progressing, but there's no obvious symmetry where we're looking for repeatability because the infinity codes, we don't have a handle of them. Just like when you hold a cup in your hand, you can grab it, you can understand it. It's tangent, it's touchable. But in infinity, we can't touch it. So we look for what's called repeatability. So as these numbers continue, one and eight is a nine. So I'm adding this, I could string them that way, but I'm going to put the, these there's 12 numbers here, the next 12 are going under, underneath. So 8 and 9 in, is 17, which is an 8. 9 and 8 is 17, it's an 8. I'm just adding the digits. 8 and 8 is 16, which is 7, 6, 4. And can you see what I'm doing? I'm lining them up because can you see that the vertical columns, 1 and 8 is 9, 2 and 7 is 9, 3. See how all these vertical co columns are 9. So now I don't even have to add anything. I can just do the complements of 9. 4 and 5 is 9, 3 and 6 is 9, 7 and 2 is 9, 1 and 8 is 9, and the last one, 8 and 1, is also 9. Now those 24 numbers will repeat forever and ever, and as you keep dividing a Fibonacci number like 55 into 89, it gets close to the 1.618, which is the golden ratio. So this is the key to nature, the, to every protein in our body is a five-pointed star. Every cell in our body is pure sacred geometry. So I just wanted to show you that the mathematical derivation of Sri 1.618 uh, is based on the addition of numbers and subtracting nine. And so, if I, so we have 12 pairs of nine. So 12 times nine is 108. So this is the code that you could circularize and put on pendants and work with and do prayers with. It's very, very special. So, so many people ask me why 108? Because it's the, it's the foundation of Mother Earth and nature and all living things. Whereas in the crystals, when we look at a crystal, it's not based on the pentagon. The crystals are based on one, two, three, four, five, six hexagonal geometry. And as you know, when we put pentagon with the hexagon, the pentahexa form, the cross-section of DNA. So this is all part of our molecular cellular memory. And, and so by working with living things, we're, we're attuning, we're healing, we're connecting to a greater source. So that's that section here. So the, the fundamental geometry of the universe is, is we're looking for the seed of creation, something that births all the other harmonic numbers. And a lot of people are asking me, why is 27? Like, we know that 24 is a sacred code. This is the wheel of 24. But we'll call that, that has a lot to do, 24 is the number of hours in a day. We can call that Earth time. So there is this thing of 24, but there's also a ratio to 27 because the 27 has a lot to do with biorhythms and circadian rhythms. So we believe that 27, which was adored by Pythagoras, is actually the, the cosmic, the number of hours in cosmic time. So earth time versus celestial time. Now 27 is also, as you know, the three cubed. So by having this Rubik's cube, which happened to be the most fundamentally um, loved toy in the history of toy making. This was the one thing people resonated to this, these movable parts and the, and the number 27. But So we know that 27 is three cubes. I'll write that in here. 20, but we can think of three cubed as three lots of nine as well. Now, before I begin this sequence, it's going to be like a binary doubling sequence, which reveals the fundamental harmonics of the universe and astronomy. I want to go back to the fundamental form. So the first thing that formed 
shape in 2D was a triangle. We know that. But in three dimensions, the first fundamental form is called the tetrahedron because it is three, one, two, three, and the base. So four triangles at 60 degree angles like this form a tetrahedron. So, so I've drawn the tetrahedron there. Now, why did I draw this little shape here? Because Magic Spider goes into this construction and says, I want to join the face center. So the center of that triangle, most people put their finger here and say that's the center, but it's actually a bit lower because if I drew three lines from apex to midpoints, where those three lines intersect, it's about there, not there. So when, so when Magic Spider goes in and says, I'm going to draw in that point, that point, that point, and that point, what they get is, um, what you get is an inverted self-similar copy of itself. So let's call this the mother tetrahedron and this is called the dual. Now the tetrahedron is the only shape in the universe that is a reciprocal of itself. It means it makes its own shape but it's inverted. No other shape in the universe can do this. And if we were to, um, so let me move the mother form. So inside of this, if Magic Spider went in again and connected those four centers, the, the next smaller tetrahedron will be upright then if you do it again reversed upright it's going to create an oscillation so tetrahedron is um, a creator of oscillations which is going back to the tuning forks and the frequencies it's the fundamental waveguide that we must attune to it's really important so and the why this is significant is that 27 because if I fill this up with water as a volume, this volume would fit 27 times inside the mother tetrahedron. This is a beautiful Masonic ancient knowledge bit of information because the 27, the Rubik's Cube, we double it, we get 54, which has got to do with the number of columns in Baalbek, where I'm from in Lebanon, the, the biggest temple of Jupiter, the biggest stone in the world was in, um, is in the Baalbek. Then we double 54 is 108, which is the Gayatri Mantra, back to the sound. The Gayatri Mantra is made of 24 syllables and it all adds up to 108. Then we double 108, we get 216, which is 6 cubed, diameter of the moon. We double 216 and we get 432 hertz. And I can keep going and all the harmonics here are resonating to astronomy to the diameters. Like the 432 is the radius, 432,000 miles is the radius of the sun. So these are light codes and we're connecting the light to the earth codes of 24 hours, to the um, gal galactic codes of 27 hours. And the ratio is 8 to 9. So what is sacred here is the ratio. We're not interested in anything else but what we call sacred proportion, which was known as the logos, the, the monad, the, the unifying principle of all creation.